in today's training, what we're talking about is the low hanging fruit strategies, low hanging fruit being who are the people that are most ready and willing and able to work with us? Who, who's ready to do business with us today? That's what our low hanging fruit is, is the people that are closest to being in our pipeline. And what we want to discuss today is two separate strategies for how to engage and find and convert those low hanging fruit. That's what we're doing in today's training. I'm going to teach two separate strategies. One of those is for how to find the low hanging fruit out there in the wild, right? On social media, that's not in your list already. And then two, and where we're going to start is how to find the low hanging fruit that's currently in your database. So if you guys are, you know, know this about real estate, something like 70% of your business this year will come from your book of existing business. That's what everybody says. Um, if you're a brand new agent, obviously that's not the case. You have, you have zero book, so it's all going to be new. But for most agents that have been in the business for any length of time, they say 70% of your business is going to come from your existing sphere. That's why we're going to start there, guys. How to identify these opportunities in your existing audience. The number one way to do this is with the technology. Here's the old school way, right? You have a list, let's say it's 500 people. You're going to call so many of those people every day, right? Maybe back 10 years ago, that was probably a great strategy because people picked up the phones. Today, you're gonna waste your time making 50 calls, two people pick up and it's not a great time, right? C calling is not as efficient these days, not, not cold calling for what we're talking about doing. Because what we're doing is we're trying to find the people that are ready to talk with us and work with us today, the low hanging fruit. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys is some, some strategies using the technology to identify who those people are so you can spend less time calling and following up with people that are not interested and instead focus your time only on those people that actually are interested in working with you and sooner than rather than later. All right. Does that sound good, guys? Sound like a good use of your time, right? Spend less time bothering people that are not interested in working right now? Woo! Uh, yeah, let's go. More time on the important people. <laughs> let's so, do this. Guys, the first thing I want to show you is how to actually use the technology to do this. We have provided several trainings on sending bulk emails with Dub or with your own system. So if you guys have a Chime, Wise Agent, Follow Up Boss, any of those tools, a MailChimp account, anything, right? You guys have any of those? Perfect. This same exact strategy applies to you. Or if you're using Dub to send out your bulk emails, the same exact strategy applies to you. So what I'm going to show you is how we're gonna use the video and the technology to identify our low-hanging prospects or low-hanging fruit. If anyone's not familiar with the idea of the newsletter, the idea that we've covered several times in these trainings, the video email newsletter, if anyone doesn't know what that is, then raise a hand, please. My, we, we got a smaller room today, guys, so we can be sort of interactive. There's only like a 12 or 13 of us here. Does anyone not know what the video email newsletter is? Everyone have an idea what that is? We've, we've done some several trainings on that. You're going to send one video email to your audience. That's where this whole thing starts. So what goes below a video in an email? Examples here, uh, dub in 90 seconds. This is a perfect one. What goes below a video, guys? You have buttons, calls to action. In this example video that I have, I have a button that says I'm interested. The way that dub technology works is everyone that watches a video or clicks a button is going to get trapped. So you get to see specifically who's watching the video, how much, if they clicked your buttons, where they were, all that information. So the number one strategy for using Dub to identify the low hanging fruit in your database, in your sphere, is exactly what I'm showing you now. You're gonna create one video the video newsletter, right? People often ask here, what what should we create? What, what should we send to the list? Like yesterday's training was, they're all over the place in terms of industry. So like, what do we say? For real estate guys, this should be a no brainer. In fact, we just did a training on this last week. Even if you have no idea what to say to your audience, that is not a problem at all. Cause you can come right here to the AI on the dashboard and just ask it. It's like your best friend who's a marketing genius for real estate. You can just come right in here and say, what are three topics I should create videos on to get more leads 
for my real estate business. So what we're talking about, right? We're saying we're going to send the video to our audience. What do I send to my, I don't know. What do I send? I have buyers and sellers and mortgage. I have all these clients. What do I send to them? This is what you send. You're going to ask the AI, what do I send? Again, this, if you guys have your own idea for a market update, you got inspiration from some other thought leader you follow, a coach or whatever, you, you followed them and they said, here's what you should say to your audience. Great, use that. But if you have no idea, no inspiration, here's your inspiration. Come and just ask the AI, what should I say, Mr. AI? And it's going to give you whatever you ask for. I asked for three topics. It gave me three great topics. How to buy your first home, a step-by-step -step guide. So that one's a good buyer lead and exploring the best neighborhoods in your city. That's probably good for buyers or sellers, right? Sellers want to know the best neighborhoods whether they're going to move because they're not happy where they're at. And buyers want to know the best neighborhoods because they're coming in from different areas. So let's take that one. I'm going to take that one topic and now I'm going to say, write me a message based on this topic. If I can spell topic, paste the topic. Oops, I guess I didn't copy it. Try that one more time. Copy, paste. And this one I want to be 250 words because I want it to be three minutes long. I'm going to hit submit or maybe a minute and a half, whatever. So now I went from, I have no idea what to say to my audience today, all the way to, I know exactly what I'm going to say in this video to my audience today, right here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to click add to scripts. And now I know exactly to read from my script with the teleprompter, either on the desktop or on the mobile. So I have no idea what to say to my audience all the way to, here's exactly what I'm going to say to my audience. So that's my video right here. I have dub in 90 seconds. That's my what to say to my audience. Now below this video, you can see I've added the button that says I'm interested. When you guys send your campaigns, there's always several buttons. For every real estate agent, we recommend a couple of buttons. One is call me, text me, or email me, or book a time in my calendar. The direct response. What do you prefer? Do you prefer people book you, call you, text you, whatever that is? Give that option there. That's the number one thing you want, right? Immediately conversate with me so we can talk and move on. That's the number one thing you have. The second thing, this is this is the new lesson that we're actually gonna show you guys today, is this type of button here. This says, I'm interested. I'd like to learn more. This is interesting, right? Whatever you want the button to say, I'm interested is a very easy, soft response because they're not saying, I wanna call you right now. They're not saying, I wanna book a time in your calendar for tomorrow. They're saying, I'm interested. This is interesting. Thanks for this information. Some Whatever you want the button to say, but the idea here is that it's a softer, response. I don't even know what this button does. Like if I'm a recipient of your video, I don't even necessarily know what this button does. Let's click it. Let's find out. I'm interested in working. I'm interested in knowing more about this. Oh, thanks. I'll be in touch. Great. So as a recipient, all I know is that I clicked a button that says I'm interested. What does this do for you though, as the sender? What this does is this allowed the person to raise their hand. And so now inside of Dub, I can come right here to my reporting and filter specifically by who clicked buttons. And I'm going to get that my buttons were clicked. Of course, my information is not being tracked because I am I'm a dub user. It won't track your own stuff. So it will track your recipient stuff. So now I can filter specifically like this week who clicked my buttons and I can export this. Now that becomes your low hanging fruit because those are people that opened your email, said, oh, hey, I recognize this. Say, this is interesting for me. They saw the video, the thumbnail and said, I want to hear from John. They clicked on the button. They watched the video from John. And then they click the button that says, I'm interested, or I'd like to learn more, or thanks for this video, right? They clicked a button that says something. And now that ends up being your lowest hanging fruit because they've taken further action than anyone else, right? They didn't just open the email. They didn't click a link. They went further above and beyond. Now using this reporting, let's say you didn't get a ton of clicks on the I'm interested. Let's take it one layer back. And now we can go to page views or link clicks. So who actually did click the button in the email? Maybe they didn't make it through the full video. Maybe they didn't click a button below, but at least we can see who saw the video, who saw the email, clicked it, opened it, and then clicked on the video itself. So this is another way to identify the lower hanging fruit. So guys, we just moved up the tree, right? The bottom, the button clicks here, that's the very lowest, the lowest of the low hanging fruit, the ones you can just reach right now. The next one up, a little bit higher in the tree, right? Maybe you need a ladder, a little bit harder to reach. That's the email clicks. That's the people that are receiving your emails, opening your emails and clicking on the content. They're not quite as engaged as the person that says I'm interested, but that's the next layer of your fruit, where they're at in terms of intention. And then again, one button there where you now have your smart call list. So guys, instead of spending weeks or days cold calling the list of hundreds and, you know, vast majority of people are not even going to answer the phone unless they recognize it's you and 
are looking forward to hearing from you. This ends up being a much smaller call list. And those conversations are going to be 100% different than the cold calls. Someone that just watched your video of your market update of telling them how they're going to increase the value of their home. You saw they watched the video and then click the button says, I want to increase the value of my home. And then they get a call from you. Imagine that conversation. It's going to be 10 times better than the cold call. They're like, oh, hey, oh, hey, yeah, John. Thanks, buddy. I'm busy right now. Or just nothing. This is going to be, oh my God, John, I literally just saw the video from you. Thanks so much, man. I didn't realize you're going to give me a call right now. That, that conversation is 100% different and 100% more productive. So this is using the dub technology specifically, how to find your lowest low, right? The different layers in your contacts and who you want to spend your time following up with. There's three parts to that, right? The first part I showed you guys is sending the video itself. What should you say? How do you engage your audience with something useful? You do not want to say, how's it been, right? How's it been? Like, hey guys, how's it been? That does not provide any value to the buyer or seller or person that's opening this email. The investor doesn't provide a lot of value to them, right? If you provide a market update that says, hey guys, did you know I just learned this thing and it looks like rates are going to be turning around in three, whatever, right? Whatever insight you want to provide, that positions you as the thought leader, helps you remain top of mind, not as the guy who's just bugging them and saying, hey, how's, how's it been? Are you ready to buy or sell? So that's why we started with that. What am I sending? always something insightful, valuable, educational. What am I sending? The second piece we talked about is adding the ability for people to raise their hand from your video. They clicked, they clicked a button that says, I want to know more. And then you guys already know if you have a final action, which is call me, text me, book a time. They've done that. There is no follow-up required, right? They've already picked themselves and put them in your basket. They're ready to go. So that's why you have that button. But for the people that are not ready to be picked, they're not going to call you or text you or book you immediately. You want a softer option for them. Check out my case studies. Check out my buyer's guide. I'm interested. Check out my seller's guide. Those are much softer responses that people are more likely to click on than the call me, book me, text me right now. And that gives you an opportunity to see who's engaged, who's watching, who thinks that, man, this guy is interesting or I should learn from that. I have, I'm willing to hear what he has to say. It's much better than I'm totally ignoring this person. I don't even know who they are. This is the second part is using the buttons and the tracking here to identify those specific layers in your contacts. Who opened the email, who clicked on the email, who watched hundred percent or clicked buttons that says, I'm interested, learn more, look at the reviews. So that's the second piece of that, guys, is the filtering, the reporting. And then the third part is, sorry, that's the third part here is actually coming in and filtering by the specific engagements that we set up. So we sent a campaign, we posted a video, whatever, and now we're going to filter by those clicks, opens, and watch rates. And that gives us our smart list, our warm calls, our much better productive activities of people that are actually engaged and looking forward to hearing from us versus calling people that haven't and don't want to. One, two, and three. AI to video to email newsletter, button templates, everything added to in capture that engagement and quantify it, right? Are they interested? Did they just open it? And then the filtering to understand specifically who those people are and give you your immediate actions to do that day. You send video email newsletter on Monday. You come in on Tuesday, filter by who clicked, who watched, who opened. Start with the people who clicked a button. Those are your calls immediately. Go to the people then who clicked the link. That's your next call list. Then go to the people that didn't just open, you know, depending on how big your list is and stuff, you'll have a number of activities to do there versus randomly calling your whole list. So really quick pause here, guys. Questions on any part of what I just showed, any part of that workflow to identify the low-hanging fruit in your existing database. I do see a couple of chats here though. So let me uh, switch over. I'll stop my share. Share, will I have access to the recording? Yes, share, go kill your showing. We appreciate you. Recording will be uh, there for you. Good luck. Um, what else we got here? I think I saw something else in the, the Q&A. Where was that? Hey, Ruben, how's it going? Hey, Darius. That was uh, me rooting you on before. Yeah, yeah, right on. I was like, was that, it sounded like Ruben, but I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question when you get a moment. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I thought I saw a couple, but I only see shares right now. So yeah, let's go. What do you got? You know, lead scoring is is something that I think is, is a really technical thing. And most people, I'd say probably 98% of people don't score their leads because there's so, so much math behind it. And there's so much stuff that, can trigger the score of a lead. And most of it has to be automated and it's really hard to do that. How can we create a, an internal system to score our leads to figure out who we should spend the most time on? Like there's low hanging fruit, but then there's low hanging fruit of the low hanging fruit, right? right. Like the, 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 the fruit right in our basket, right on our counter. Right. So 
how can we figure out who you know who's the who's the top or i should say the bottom of the funnel so this is actually um the, the one i just showed but i'm going to take it just a little tiny bit further guys because ideally when we're doing things at scale we need them to be repeatable we need them to be automated we need them to be happening without us constantly holding our finger on the button. And that's what I want to show you guys how to utilize the technology to do that. So just one step further from what we described earlier. So guys, we have the button that's I'm interested, right? We did, we determined earlier that that's the lowest of the low, the people that are, well, I guess the, the highest of the high, but the lowest fruit for us, the most closable because they opened, they watched, and they click. Now, what else can that do besides coming in here and manually filtering by the report? That's sort of the, you still having to hold your finger on the button a little bit. If you guys are taking advantage of the automations that Dub provides, that can then trigger a whole different series of activities. So someone raises their hand, right? I want to learn more. I want to know more, check out the case study, whatever. You can then use that activity, that hand raise to trigger a whole series of automated activities, such as sending them a follow-up saying, Hey, I saw you checked out our stuff. I'm going to be in touch shortly, a text and email, both. The other thing it will do is it will internally notify you. You'll get an immediate email that says, Hey, John just picked himself. John just raised a hand and says, come pick me. I'm a fruit. That's the other piece piece of this and how it can truly be automated where you're not doing anything. Again, your fingers off the button, you record a video with the AI, right? So you press the button for two seconds, record your video, send it out. And then the rest of the technology is going to do the rest of the work where you wake up the next day and you have a task list right here, tasks that says, call John, call Bill, call Joe. Those are your fruit ready to pick. So that's the combination of the technology itself all, all the way with the more, more advanced part of the technology with the automations. So Anyone, guys, on the pro plan, any plan can do the first part of what I showed you, where your finger's still just on the button a little bit, right? You got to come filter on the reporting, and that becomes your call list or your hit list that day. The full automation will, where again, your finger's really off at that point. You you just wake up and say, here's here's what I got to do. The only thing is that can't be automated, like a phone call. That's what what you're where you step in. So that's sort of the balance there, guys, between the full automation finger off the button and then some sort of hybrid where we're automating part of it where people are raising their hand, but then you responding to those hand raises is still a manual effort. So uh, great question, Ruben. And yes, that that is just the, the final frontier as we call it, guys, is automation. Not everyone's ready for it, but everyone should have that be their goal. Because guys, in real estate, every single top producer is using some form of automation. Autoresponders, drip sequences in, in multitudes, right? Like every single top producer I've ever worked with has CRMs, automations, things in place. And actually, okay, I do know one guy who is like older and he's been around forever and he's using like a Rolodex and he's like, no, 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 I'm not using it. So that's the outlier guys. Let's not be that, right? <laughs> We're not the guy that's been here for 50 years and has this tremendous book of multi-million dollar listings already. You don't have to work. That's why we're here. We, we got to put in some effort, put in some elbow grease to get to where that guy is. I can promise you everyone doing the work is using automations. So I don't want you to feel discouraged and say, no, no, no that's too advanced for me. I'm never going to be there. More like I'm going to be there eventually. I'm not there yet, maybe, but I'm going to continue to learn. I have all the expert guidance and resources that I can need every single day. I can come talk to somebody about this. So you guys have everything you need to get to automation. So I don't want you to ever feel like that's out of reach for you or above or beyond what you should be doing. Every Most real estate CRMs offer this, guys, because you should be doing it. So if you're not doing it, you're missing out on a big part of your business, whether it's through Dub or through your real estate CRM or through any system. We, we don't, frankly, uh, we just want you to succeed. So any system you want to use with automation, we can add video to any of it and make it all work. Um, again, final frontier for us uh, people trying to grow our businesses there automation. Okay. A uh, couple questions there. Um, let's see here. Did you answer that one? Rich, in regards to scoring, I've seen a percentage used for closing as they progress, the percentage gets higher. You know, if there's a resource we can assign a percentage, <laughs> Rich. So actually I have a, a feature in the uh, design right now. We're, we're, we've been developing so much stuff, guys, like the desktop app, the the AIs, the, the technology, we've been developing so many things that I actually had the lead scoring in the uh, in the mix for lead or feature development for some time now. So it will be coming down the road here, Rich. We don't have a specific feature for lead scoring, but what, what lead scoring is going to look something like here, where again, you can filter by a specific activity, but like, what if I want to see who clicked buttons, who's clicked the most buttons and I can filter and it's going to show me, here's the contacts that clicked 
the most buttons, watch the most videos. And that's how our scoring will work. Like if a contact watched 100% of more than one video, they have a higher score than someone who did not watch 100% of more than one video. So currently not there yet. We don't have the scoring system fully developed. It's on the way though. So you the way scoring would work right now is you're gonna do what the activity reporting is here where you're gonna filter specifically by things like CTA clicks. These are your highest score people right here. People that have clicked buttons, those are your highest scored leads. And you're gonna click export and you'll know who they are immediately. The other, then you, can, you, know, you, know, you know that your next highest score is your video or page views. I'd go page views. Cause those are the people that opened the email, said, this looks interesting, clicked on the thumbnail, watched some percentage of the video. So highest score, next highest score, and then link clicks is sort of the one below that. So there is a way to do it right now, just like that. You know, this is a high score, medium score, and lower scores, email link click. Email opens, I would just kind of ignore, guys. It's not a metric that I place a lot of importance on because uh, iPhones and watches and CRMs, they all trigger email opens. So you can send an email and it says the email was open three times and the person themselves did not actually open it yet. Not a metric I place a ton of uh, confidence in these days, but clicks, views, other clicks, those are all human activities doing those things. So opens are the only one I sort of don't don't place heavy uh, importance on. Uh, okay, so guys, we have covered the primary strategy we wanted to talk about today, which is how to identify the low hanging fruit that already exists in your list. One thing I did not cover was understanding some of this reporting, just really quick so you guys can see at a glance. There's several different types of reports here. That's the filters I was just showing you guys. Opens means that if this video was put in the body of an email, there's an email open tracking element that's added. This only occurs when the video is put into an email and that's the only time you're gonna get opens. So if you put this into a text message or social media post or somewhere else, you will never get opens. So just be aware, email open is specific for body of the email. And again, not a metric I place importance on because technology can say it was opened when it never was. The next one, link clicks. That means they opened the email, they opened the message that you sent, text, email, social, and said, hmm, this looks good. I'm gonna click and play this. So that is showing some high level of intention. They read the subject, they read the body that you may have included, and they said yes, and click play. So that's what a link click is. The page view means that they successfully viewed the video that the page is on like this. If I go to look at this video and I look at the page that the video is on, this is a page view. The only other thing left is a watch, this right here, a watch. A specific watch means this. It means that they watch some very specific percentage of the video and then close this window and went away. So if I watch 100%, it'll automatically report 100%. However, if I watch right here 38% and I do not close this window, this is very common on a mobile device. Most people don't close tabs on a mobile. They swipe up, they hit the lock screen, they hit the home button, they do something other than close the tab. And if that happens, this will report as only a view and not a specific watch report. So just be aware of that, guys. If you're seeing page views, that's what that means. It means that they're likely viewing this video on their mobile device and they did not complete 100% and just went somewhere else. That's what, mo and you can see right here, it shows a desktop or mobile. So that's what you guys will see a lot of the video page views or partial views less than 100s from a mobile device. And then last is the button clicks. That's sort of obvious. It means they click the button. So just be aware, that's your different reports, guys. That's how you can break those down and what each of them means. Email opens, do not really put a lot of weight there. Link clicks means something good happened. They opened, they liked, they clicked. Views means that everything. They viewed all the way some portion of the video, but did not click a button. So guys, we have one more piece of this training, which won't be very long but I won't want to talk to you about the other part, which is how to get your low hanging fruit from the wild. The first part was how to get your low hanging fruit from your database, your sphere. The second part here is how to get it from the wild. Now, because we have provided previous trainings on what I'm going to talk about, I won't go super deep into it, but we will provide the previous training links where we do super deep dive into exactly what I'm going to talk about. What I'm going to show you guys is creating content for your audience. It actually starts back with the AI. If I don't know what I should do, come back to the AI and ask it. The same exact question we started with, what are content I should create to generate business for my real estate business? That's gonna give you the content. It's gonna tell you what to create. You're gonna put it into a teleprompter and then you're gonna record it. And this is gonna, if you guys have no ideas what to do, you have ideas. 
So we should never not have ideas. It's just not simply not true. You have a expert genius marketing thing, literally 30 seconds away from telling you all the answers. So not knowing what to say is no longer an excuse for anybody. It's right there. The second piece, recording. Every week, we can still have excuses for that, right? Like, ah, I got to get my video personality. My hair was not combed today, whatever, right? That is also very doable. We can get over that piece. When we get over those two parts, we don't know what we're going to say. We're not comfortable recording. Now we're ready to ro roll. The, the world is our highway. With the desktop app, guys, this is what people are using to power the, your, their social channels. If you're going to do something like a TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, any of those, this desktop app is perfectly built to record and create that type of content. What do I say? We already answered that, right? You have the content to say, now you have the ability to record it. So the idea, the AI is going to give you what to say to find your low hanging fruit. You don't have to ask it about the low hanging fruit. Just say, what do I do to generate business? That's going to help you identify the people that are ready to work with you today or six months from now or a year, whatever. It's going to help you find these people out in the wild though, because out in the wild, there's a billion people. Only is this little tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of them are looking to buy or sell. And we need to find those people. The only way to do that is by posting to social media. Social media, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, they have algorithms in place that are literally specifically designed to show the appropriate content to the appropriate people. So when you create content that's teaching home buyers how to shop for a home and how to work with an agent, the people that are looking to buy homes and work with an agent are going to see that content. They're going to find it. Facebook and Instagram, YouTube is going to do the best job that it can to show those people that content. So that's literally all that it takes is you to create the appropriate content. What's appropriate? AI. You, you don't even need to know. Or if you have a coach, perfect. Listen to the coach, ask the AI if you don't. That's what you create. And the algor algorithms, the social content is automatically going to show this content to the appropriate people. So how do we find the low hanging fruit from social media? You create the appropriate content and you let the algorithms show this content to the appropriate people. Now, is this a perfect science? Not necessarily. Will somebody that's maybe not your ICP see this video? Great. Yeah, maybe. But the likelihood of them showing, like if you're in Florida creating content about how to increase your home's value in Florida... It's going to show this people to video or show this video to people in Florida or people looking to move to Florida or people that used to live in Florida. That's who it's going to show it. It's not going to show it to people that are interested in walking their dog in, you know, some other country. That's the idea here, guys. So by creating the content that's appropriate, what's appropriate? You don't even need to know. Just ask the AI. It'll tell you what's appropriate or a coach or, or whatever your trusted source is. Create the appropriate content and just post. And the algorithms, the social media platforms, are gonna do the best job to show this content to your low hanging fruit, to your opportunities. So this is the number one strategy for how to reach your low hanging fruit from the wild is simply create the appropriate content. You don't know, now you know how to create the appropriate content. This is the best opportunity to get in front of those appropriate, appropriate contacts is by creating the best fit content. And guys, this gets more specific. If you want to work specifically with buyers, like maybe you specialize with veterans, create that form of content, create buyer focused, veteran focused real estate content. And this is the algorithms on the social platforms are going to deliver that exactly who they need to be delivered to. Yes, might show other people. Yes, that's a possibility. But more importantly, it's going to show the people that you're looking for and the people that are looking for you. That's all that it takes with social. It's our friend right now. We just have to play by the rules. And once you know the rules, which are, it's there to, it's there to benefit you, then you can take advantage of that. Okay, pause on this part, guys. Like I said, if anyone is unfamiliar with the desktop app, with the custom size pieces, um, let us know. We'll deliver the last training we provided for this type of content. We did a whole hour on more on, on a webinar on this one. So if anyone has questions on getting stuff from the wild, let me know. And uh, I think I see a hand there. Let me stop that. Hillary, welcome. Hi. What do you for us? Hey, um, for the posting on social, um, I've got a business page. I don't have a whole bunch of followers. Do I just stick it there or does it go on the personal or just stick with that business page and that algorithm will find it? Yes. Yeah, stick to the business page that you created. This is Facebook then, right? Yes. I have a personal experience with this, client experience with this. Every social channel, Facebook is actually a little bit more finicky. Like you got to you gotta post with regularity. If you post once a month or something, they don't want to show it to as many people. But if you post it every day or three times a week or four, then it's like, it's going to show it to more people. Your views go up and up and up. 
And as soon as you stop posting with regularity, they go back down. So it's sort of like, dang, man, you, you got to get something with uh, consistency. So that's why the content planning, we've, we've done this before, guys, too, like the uh, social calendar, right? What are 15 topics I should create? There's your calendar. There's three posts a week for five weeks. There's my 15 topics. Record three on a Monday and then post them. That, that's sort of what you have to get yourself set up with so that you can post with regularity and really take advantage of the algorithms and their ability to share you to other people. Specifically to answer your question, yes, to your business page, you can post it to your personal page as well. I have, I like, for example, I will post something to Instagram and Instagram will post it to Facebook automatically because it's, it's connected. And I'll go to my personal or my business page and post a thing there as well. And so that same post is in two different places in Facebook. And it's funny because one of these got 47,000 views. The one that I posted through Instagram got 47,000 views. The same video I posted through Facebook got like a couple hundred views. So yeah, I mean, I don't post the same exact video on the same exact page back to back. That's just like probably asking for it. But if you post it through Instagram on, and it's going to share it to Facebook, and then you also post it to your business page and also post it to your personal, I think that would be acceptable. So a uh, multi-channel. And so if you, yeah, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, like wherever it'll fit, post it. Good. Great question, Hillary. Thank you. Okay, guys, other questions here. We're coming up on the end. So if anyone wants to, uh, Come on stage, ask a, anything else specific or generic, whatever. Would love One to get question for, for the Germans. Um, the AI, do yeah. I have to say everything first in English and then tell the AI, now do it in German or should I you just... Can, you, can, you can put that right from the first prompt. You would say, what are 10 topics, blah, 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 in German. And it'll give you an output in German. So in you... German. Yeah, you won't have to re rewrite it in German. You could do that. You could just put everything in English and then say, great, now translate this to German. Or you could do it right from the first prompt and say everything but in German. But I tell him he is a German and now he should repeat, uh, answer me. Uh, it won't learn like that. So it's not, like, you know, the other chat GPT, the first portal, it's designed to where like you can tell it, okay, pretend that you're a this thing. You pretend you're a German and now let me ask you all these questions and it'll answer as if you was a German. It won't work like that one. So you just do it in the one in the single prompt. You say, write this response in German and then you ask the response that you want and it'll give it to you in German. And it would be possible also in Polish and in, in Spanish. Yeah, yeah the, the, the chat GPT supports, I believe, what like hundreds of languages um, yeah. are it captions, though, are a different story. Closed yeah. captions, I think it's like 30 languages or something. But the AI, I think it could probably... Put out, put out whatever you ask. Great. Good one, Dirk. Okay, guys, other questions on this whole process. There's really two opportunities there. There's your sphere of influence, the low-hanging flute. You guys have people that are ready to buy and sell in your list right now, at least one person, right? Unless you've called every single person on your list and had a personal conversation, you know they're not ready to go. You probably have one, probably. You All right, Darius. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Yes. I have, I have a, I wanted to know, where can I uh, check out the videos, the previous videos? that yeah. you guys have created got it uh so here we go um we have a showcase built for this um if you guys ever i don't i don't think we have it somewhere where you can click on your dashboard to find it right now but if you guys want to come to the chat and say give me previous trainings we'll deliver it for you um okay. right now we have everything set up as a showcase so right here showcases real estate workshops i'm going right. to give you the link i'm going to put that in the chat right now so if anyone wants access to previous trainings they will be there on that showcase. So I just put that in the chat there. Oh, you got it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Sweet. You got it. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Okay. And yeah, Raul, thank you for that question. Cause that's where the previous trainings are guys. If you want to know any section of how to do the newsletter, how to use the desktop app, how to collect testimonials. It's like they, all these things tie in together just to make each one better. Like you learn how to collect testimonials. Then you learn how to add those to your marketing messages your marketing messages become that much more powerful because there's testimonials connected to them. Then you learn how to do the newsletter. So you're blasting everyone at once with the testimonials connected. And then they're like, hey, I want to leave you a testimonial. I love working with you. Now you have more testimonials, more referral. It's just like everything powers it itself up. The AI gives you what to say. The content allows you to send it and you track it. Now you have opportunities to call people. It's, it's all meant to work in conjunction. Um, you just got to learn how the pieces all help each other. And if you get stuck or have questions or need support, that's what we're here for. And we're happy to help every single weekday here, guys. We take our weekends off. I know you guys don't. So uh, sorry for you. <laughs> so uh, yeah. All right. 
Uh, anything else, guys? Anything else we can do here for you in this session? Good. All righty. Well, as always, we appreciate you very much. Anything you guys need, you come ask, support, chat, email. We're right around the corner. Live training every single weekday. I love to see your guys' in there. Love to hear success and frustration and help. Literally, guys, I will tell you, when people come frustrated and I help them get over that, that's just as good, if not better, as the, hey, everything's awesome. I'm like, okay, everything's awesome. God, I don't know. I doubt that. I'm like, are you doing everything you're supposed to? But when they get stuck and I help them overcome that, then it's like, now everything's awesome. And we know it's awesome because we uh, fixed the problem. So either way, guys, we're happy here. I wanted to also share a quick um, resource here that I just recorded this morning, actually. Um, it's, in the, it's in the chat. It's a YouTube video. And it's on upselling. And I think that I, there's a really interesting story that I shared in there. And I'll just very quickly give you guys a teaser on it. Um, I met with this CEO years ago. This was probably six years ago. And I met with a CEO and he said, I need more leads. I need more leads for the business. We've got sales reps that are, that are, that are hungry. And, and I said, great. Uh, do you, do you want to buy leads or do you want, do you have leads already in your system? He said, no, I want to buy leads. I want to spend some money. I want to go find the right target audience. And after a little bit of diligence and research, I sort of realized that he has an entire, entire database of leads that he had been working with in the past and people that just went cold and people that had expressed interest in something else. And I said, I said, this is a community that you've built and, you know, upselling, cross-selling, low-hanging fruit strategies is not about bothering the people that have come to you in the past. In fact, it's about re-engaging your community, your tribe. And by doing so, what you can do is you can get people that already trust you, already know you. I mean, we all know by now that it takes about 12 touch points to get a sale. People have to go through a lot of different channels to actually overcome trust hurdles in their minds. And that's a very normal human thing that we all do. In fact, uh, when was the last time you added something to your cart in Amazon and Amazon knew that and sent you a text message or a notification or a bump and said, hey, come back and here's a discount or here's this and here's that. And you'll go re-research it and you'll read the reviews. You'll read the testimonials. You'll understand, is this actually something that you want to buy? Same thing happens for real estate and for any service for that matter, where there needs to be multiple touch points. Folks, if you have already spent time building a community, building up your CRM, having leads somewhere in a database, wherever that may be, let's go cross sell, let's go upsell, let's go focus them on the low hanging fruit. In this story, in this case study that I shared in this YouTube video, ultimately we ended up going to that list of thousands and thousands of leads and it didn't cost any money. It was just the server costs and the architecture and the, you know, the, the sort of man hours to get it all done. Um, but ultimately the conversion rate was like five or six times what an ad would, would have been. And, and the other thing is that the sales cycle was one fifth the time because those 12 touch points, you can't just jam those into a one week period. It takes time for the person to process and build trust and, and get over some of those hurdles. So anyways, Take a look at that YouTube video. I'd love to get some feedback. If you don't subscribe to my channel, consider doing so on YouTube. I'm really trying to go at least daily or every other day. Thanks to Ina for my team, who's really my uh, accountability partner. So thanks, guys. And, and the, the key takeaway there, guys, is remember to provide value. Don't send just following up. How's it going? Don't do that, right? There's so much more insightful, valuable information you can show to your audience that can just turn everything around, right? They can go from... I don't know what's happening. Like, I, I, I'm so scared right now. Like, I, I don't, everything's so expensive. And you're like, hey, by the way, did you know that there's a 1% down payment plan available through my mortgage partner? And they're like, holy crap, I thought I was going to have to put $100,000 down. Like, I'm actually ready to go now. Like that, right? That little bit of information got you a customer versus, are you ready? How's it been? How are you doing? You ready to buy? And they're like, no, I, I don't want to spend my $100,000 life savings on this deposit. Insight, guys, providing value and information always welcome. People will, will forward that, right? People are, will actually share that if it's insightful and valuable. No one will ever share the, hey, how's it going? You ready to talk? No one's going to forward that or remember that or say, thank you so much for this message, right? That's not going to happen. Value and insight and, and education is always welcome. So remember that. All right, guys, thank you for your time and uh, have a good one. See you next time. Bye-bye.